Hi, this is Bart Paulson, and this video is going over the 20 concepts curriculum that Cycling74 has on their webpage to talk about uh, using Max, MSP, and Jitter. Um, and this is lesson three on messages. Now, it says it's part one. It turns out that there, uh, lesson four, messages part two, doesn't exist. Um, there's nothing there, so this is really the only part on messages. Um, now, Lessons one and two were about jitter, and were very macro with these large-scale, uh, complicated objects uh, modules that could uh, work with video. Now we're getting back to the very, very basics of Max MSP. In fact, the very first thing to talk about here with messages is about the bang. And so I've put a bang in here, and if I click on it, you see it lights up. Uh, that's a button, and we're getting a bang. Um, I'm going to unlock the patch, and I'm going to... Um, I had everything in here. I've deleted it selectively. Now I'm just going to restore it. Um, now I've got two bangs put together. And if I click on the first one, the message shows up in the second one. Well, that's pretty elementary. Um, I do notice, though, if I just tap on my trackpad, you don't even see the first one light up. But if I uh, click on my trackpad, you can see them both. Anyhow, unlock the patch, and let's go to the next one. And this is about getting several bangs hooked up to a print. Um, and I've got the max window open here. I'm going to make this part just a little bit bigger. Because when we print stuff, that's where it's going to show up. And I can click on any one of these uh, buttons. I get, and I click that. And then you see over here, it says patch 02. And then the bang, because the button just sends the bang. And there's the second one. And there's the third one. So all three of them send bangs. Uh, those are the messages that they send. Uh, let me unlock the patch here. Here's the third one. I can actually I can send uh, messages with actual text also. So I've got print, and then this is the label for what I want to print under the object name. Print this, and it prints the word open. I click on this message, and it feeds in uh, word. Quick and easy. The next thing is if I put an integer uh, box here, you know, type I and get my integer and have it print down to the packs. What's kind of cool is I can put the mouse over it and just drag the mouse up and down. And you see I get all these different values. Every time it changes value, it prints. So you actually get a lot. I'm going to erase that. Well, that's kind of cool. So that actually allows a particular kind of user interaction. Um, the next one is actually with a floating point, a, a flow num. And so we can actually have decimals here. Now, if I, if I drag, what, what's neat about the flow num is the digit that changes depends on the left to right position of the arrow when you drag it. So if I come over here to the zero and I drag it up and down, you see that it's, it's switching in whole number increments. But if I come over to the right and drag up and down, now it's in tenths, a little farther to the right. Now it's in uh, hundreds, a little farther. Uh, that's as far as I can get in this particular window. But you see, it depends on where you drag it. That's kind of cool. Okay, the next one after that is about data types. Now, here I can just click on this. I've got a, an integer, a floating point number, a flow num, and a text message or a symbol. And if I click on the, the uh, integer, you see that it prints as an integer. We can tell it's an integer because there's no decimal places. On the other hand, if I click on the 3.14, it interprets it correctly as a floating point number and actually sticks a bunch of extra digits there on the end. Or if I click on the word pi, it correctly interprets it as a text symbol and does it as such. Now what's neat about this is you can actually, I'm going to unlock this, is you can actually um, change the variable type. So see, for instance, right here this says pi, and if I click on it, I get the word pi, but if I change that message to a 3, see I click on that, change it to a 3, and now it's a 3. I can change the 3.14, which is a floating point. I can feed that into the integer. And now that comes out as a floating point. Or I can take the, the text symbol pi, feed it into the uh, flow num, and it switches all around. It's kind of cool. Um, the next one is about using variables. And so here I have a message that says new value. That's actually going to be some text that prints. And then colon, and then the dollar sign one means the first variable that feeds into this. And since I only have things feeding into the first inlet on the left, uh, if I click on the three, you'll see it says patch seven. That's the label of the object. And it says new value three. But if I click on 3.14, I get that. 
And if I click on pi, I get that. So it's just replacing the dollar sign one with whatever comes into the inlet. And the last one for this particular is, um, is a fun one. We're not actually going to print it, but I'm able to use a message box uh, to control the property of an object. So for instance, right here, I've got an integer and it feeds into a message box that says font size and we got the variable thing here so whatever numbers in its integer box is going to replace font size and if I just put my mouse over here at the top oh, by the way that's feeding into a comment um, you see there's the comment with its inbox uh, I have comments up here too but if I lock it and just drag up and down look it's all interactive and it changes the size of the font and that's a very cool thing to do anyhow um, that's it for the messages, uh, the third lesson in the 20 Concepts curriculum at Cycling74 site. Thanks.